And to help us break down the trial a little bit further, we brought in uh, UT Associate Law Professor Greg Gilchrist. And Greg, thanks, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Let's, let's go back to, to yesterday right. when the, uh, the evidence that really brought this trial to a halt was brought forth. Did the judge, Stacey Cook here, have any other choice other than to declare a mistrial? No. No, I mean, mistrial was at that point the only option. Uh, the statement made by the sergeant that uh, the defendant had failed a polygraph test yeah. is, um, couldn't be admitted, and, and the jury isn't allowed to hear that. Polygraph tests are, are not uh, reliable. Uh, the fact that someone failed a polygraph really doesn't indicate anything about whether they were honest, but people believe it does, right? And so the jury, having heard that, would have a difficult, if not impossible, time giving a fair trial. And at this point, the prosecution's case comes to a screeching halt. Yeah. And then the deal, the deal making begins. So they go behind closed doors. Why not go forward and retry this case here? Right. So that's always an option. Anytime there's a mistrial, the prosecution can retry the case, uh, but it entails resources. And when, when I say resources, uh, I don't just mean money. I mean the uh, the emotional resources and the and the resources of the office that went into this case. They'd spent, what, days in court and, and called nine witnesses, so that's a lot of work, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's mm. all the other work that went beforehand and, and, the, and the strain on the families, yeah. uh, and so I think they must have made a decision that a resolution was better, right. uh, some closure was better than the, going on. The painstaking uh, three and a half years yeah. after yeah. This, this fire took place. Uh, lastly, the Alford plea. We've heard so much about Alford pleas here. We tend to think that uh, uh, the defendant doesn't admit guilt, but there's enough evidence to prosecute or to convict. In this case, we understand Ray Abu Arab still says he's not guilty. Yeah, that's what an Alfred plea is. Uh, yeah. You know, so famously, the, the case where Alfred pleas were, were accepted by the Supreme Court involved a man named Henry Alfred, and his quote was, I am not guilty, mm. but I plead guilty. And it's just saying, I will not have a trial, I want the benefit of this deal, but I maintain that I'm innocent. And but so the defense feels that his, his defense team feels differently, correct? They correct. said, well, we, we can't, you can't be acquitted in this case. Right, well, yeah, so they enter the deal, and, and the defense lawyer advocates for the sentence that's been agreed to, uh, but as a as a sort of narrative matter, the defendant is able to maintain that he didn't plead he didn't he did plead guilty, but he didn't admit guilt, and right. that might be of some comfort to him. Okay, and uh, and hopefully there's some comfort to some justice here for the victims' families. As well, well, I think that's important to keep in mind because yeah. I know this is a disappointing day, I'm sure, for the prosecution and for and for the families who have been so invested and involved in this case. Uh, but there is closure, and and there is a very serious sentence that's been imposed on the person who did this, and so there is a sense that uh, justice has been done. All right, Greg Gilchrist, thanks very much for coming in and helping sure. us uh, put some perspective on this. Yeah, happy to be here. All right.